We are at a milestone on working on the bus. And we should be jumping up and down right now on Cher's egg, but it's so stinking hot that we are struggling <laughs> to show our enthusiasm. But inside here, we are rejoicing, I promise you. If anybody needs an unlicensed electrician, call somebody else. <laughs> it's starting to look pretty sexy in there. It's starting to look like it does in the movies <laughs> or in the YouTube videos. <laughs> Getting uh, a little bit emotional. Seeing it in place now, it's really exciting. There's a good chance we may not have a regular power bill ever again. One of the uh, positive things about the surgery date being pushed further and further along is that it's given me a lot of time to think and reflect. It's something that's still like a little taboo to talk about. We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles with the dream of converting an MCI D3 40 foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress one bite at a time. <laughs> what? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> <laughs> Over the past two or three months, there are some things that we haven't shared with you yet. So in today's video, we're going to get you caught up on what's been going on with our electrical system and another health issue that I've been dealing with. Guess where we're going? You got that right. We're off to the hardware store. We got one more little thing to buy before we are ready to install our electrical system. But it's been a process just leading up to the install, so let's get you caught up on what's been happening. Planning an electrical system for an off-grid, tiny home on wheels like we want in our bus can be one of the most complicated things you do most important factors for us is to be able to live in our bus off-grid as much as possible. We don't want to have to plug in, we don't have to go to our RV parks. And then the second most important thing is safety. But the process got so much easier when we partnered with Battleborn Batteries. One of the most exciting things about partnering with Battleborn Batteries is that they took the specifications from our estimated electric needs and recommended batteries that should work for us. Battleborn sells Victron Energy components and they recommended an entire electrical system to go with our Battleborn batteries. So we could order wire inside, but then we had to drive all the way around back. Because my finger. While Don and his dad were doing research and planning to do the install of the whole electrical system, Don's dad happened to run across a training course. So we're up in Elkhart, Indiana today. He's having a little training seminar. We spent a full day taking in the talks and slideshows, learning about each part and how they connected together. And I'm talking about the time that it takes to go from this to this. And more importantly, we had a chance to ask questions throughout the day. While my dad and I were preparing for the electric install, Mello was preparing for something entirely different. Mello was diagnosed with uterine fibroids. A fibroid is basically a tumor. It's normally non-cancerous, but can cause a lot of discomfort. One of my fibroids is about the size of a large lemon 
or a small avocado. It has negatively affected my day-to-day -day life for a while, but I put off going to the doctor because of the pandemic. After I received the COVID vaccine, I began seeking out a solution. There are many ways you can treat or remove fibroids. I have decided to go ahead and have a hysterectomy. This decision was not made lightly. I received three different doctor's opinions, carefully weighed up all of my options, and made the best choice for my body. And now, I just have to wait to get a surgery date. on mounting these battery rails that we're building into the bus's luggage bay. It's about uh, a little before 7 a.m. We wanted to beat the heat today. So we've got the, our first bracket here. We're also kind of setting in place where our electronic wall is gonna go. That's an easy way to carry these things. <laughs> The boys have been out here since early this morning and it's starting to get really hot so my job today again <laughs> is to make sure these guys stay hydrated. Got some icy cold water for you. Right. Today is actually 4th of July and well yeah today's 4th of July. What do you know? And while everybody else is probably having barbecues and celebrating Independence Day we're putting our batteries in which is kind of a good way to celebrate independence because these batteries are going to give us independence so that we don't have to be plugged into the grid and we can boondock for much longer. Another way to look at it is we're installing our batteries on the 4th of July. Let's hope there's no fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> now one of the cool things about the batteries that we have, the GC3 Game Changer 3.0, is that they've designed it in such a way that you can mount it in various different ways. And it is also safe to mount both in your luggage bay or inside your bus or your RV, like in your kitchen or under your bed. And this is both because of the lithium iron phosphate chemistry and the battery management system. The battery management system really makes me feel safe in knowing that it is always going to be monitored and maintained, and we don't have to worry about things like shorting out that could cause a fire. Now, Don and I can easily pick up one of these batteries ourselves. I was really surprised. I thought I wouldn't be able to do it, but it's not that bad. It's only 80 pounds per battery. So to bolt our batteries into our rails, we've decided to install riv nuts. So these are rivets that have nuts in them. They're called steel threaded inserts as well. And the way we put that all together is by having our bolt, a lock nut, and a washer, another piece of metal that you don't turn anything below that. And then this is where the brute force happens. You have to hold the bolt so it doesn't turn and then crank on your lock nut. So if you look inside the steel tube, you can actually see it get smashed. In order to get access to put a ratchet into these holes, we had to get this giant drill bit. In order to safely use this drill bit, I've decided to put on the long sleeve shirt because it's flinging hot metal everywhere. Hey, job for a fat guy. Okay, you got it in place? Yep. Wow. 
dad's underneath the bus. Taking a nap. Yep. <laughs> I'm passing him the bolts. We'll put a little bit of uh, Sika Flex between the washer and the bus floor. And then when it comes to the top, I'm putting some Loctite, a washer, and a nylon lock nut. And then we're securing them in place. All right. We also mounted some D-rings into the bus floor. This way we'll be able to use a strap to mount over the batteries with another point of support to secure the batteries in place. So we got a plan to cut out a new wall that we're going to put in to be our electric wall where all the mounting and wiring and everything goes to. We got a piece of three quarter inch treated plywood. Before we cut this wall and mounted it in our luggage bay, we wanted to go through with each of our components and get a rough game plan of where each piece would go, how it would be wired in. wall up in place. I'm going to go ahead and mount it with some wood to metal screws. You can tell it's starting to get hot and humid because my glasses are steaming up already. And then we're going to create a little bracket across the bottom so that it's mounted in the bottom frame of the floor too. So it's not going to shake around much while we're driving. It's not even 11 o'clock but I think that we're going to wrap it up here before it gets too hot, and also so I can do some indoor computer work. Good morning. It's a gorgeous day. It's so nice and cool out. Oh, nice little cool snap. I'm gonna get out for a walk before I go do my bus work today. We used to walk every day, used to get a lot of exercise, and we've shown you how our health has kind of fallen to the side. <laughs> With the bus pull, there's just been so much to do, but now I have to prioritize my health. I want to be feeling good and healthy when I go into surgery, so I am making a point of getting up and going for walks even when there's a ton of bus work to do or there's videos to edit my health is more important than anything else come on molly let's go i feel bad because don is taking on the extra responsibility and right now he's working on editing and filling in my shoes wherever I can so that I can do this because the bus bull has to keep moving along. <laughs> when he had his kidney stone problems, you know, I took care of things and, and it's his turn to take care of me, but I'm not very good at uh, letting someone do that. So there's feelings of guilt going on, but um, I know that there will come a time again where I have to do it for him, so I'm just going to take care of myself. A month or so ago, as we shared that we got our solar panels installed on the roof, thanks to a number of viewers and other people who we know in the bus community, we realized that we had the wiring done in a way that was gonna make it a little dangerous. I need to get up on the roof, cut all of our wiring ties so we have access to our wiring 
so that we could redo it properly. Um, basically, if you're an electrician, you'll understand that uh, we did it all in series, but it needed to be parallel series. It's probably a good thing that I undid all that cabling. It was not gonna be easy to work on or fix or troubleshoot in the future, so I think we're gonna find some kind of a cable management solution to run on the outside edge of that unistrut, and then that way we'll be able to troubleshoot, fix things much more easily in the future. Good morning. Got a little bit of work done this morning before it gets too hot. Boys have made it out up and early. It's already humid out. But I've got some smoothie for done for breakfast. Let's go see how it's going. How's it going? Good. I got a smoothie for you. Oh, thank you. So the guys have decided to turn the bus around so that it's facing the other direction. So they can be on this side of the bus working on the electric so they get less sun hitting them and the bus can kind of shade them while they work. Moving the bus sounds like an easy thing to do, but we weren't really prepared to move the bus. Look at this, what's going on in this table? I don't even know. It's just stuff everywhere. Stuff, more stuff. There's a bit of a ramp up to our parking pad. So we have to make sure everything's secure. So we took everything off our working table and put laid the fridge down flat just to make sure nothing topples over. Buses turned around, ready to side electric. We'll be publishing a separate video with a tour of our finished electrical system, as well as details of all the components and tools we used to put ours together. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you won't miss that video. It's almost like these guys had it all figured out ahead of time. <laughs> one down. Yep. One, one more of these to go. And then two black ones and we got the, the batteries tied together. Oh, we managed to get the two battery cables done on the red positive side. So now we're going to try to get the other two for the negative side. It is super hot. We had to get the old broken gazebo and put it up. We got it duct taped together, got a little splint on it. That's the only way we could get it to work because when we had it out, it rained so much that it caved in and broke a couple legs. Thanks to my Aunt Sydney and Uncle Gene for letting me borrow it. I'm sorry that I broke it. But that isn't the only way the batteries will be in place. We also have some D-rings that we mounted into the floor of the luggage bays there so that we can take some straps and put them across the batteries, tighten them down, and it should be super solid. <laughs> that was for you, Ruben. <laughs> we're finally at the point we're gonna wire some stuff up. The first thing we're gonna do is connect all of our batteries. Basically, when you have more than one battery, if you put them all together, positive to positive, negative to negative, they become one big battery. Uh, That's great. 
once you have your batteries all connected together, you either want to come off of the center or off a positive on the furthest one and a negative off the opposite side. The next thing they did was just screw the components into the wall, just temporarily, just to make sure the spacing was going to work for when we wired everything up. For some reason, there's a problem scheduling my surgery and it keeps getting pushed further and further along the calendar and I have to keep chasing them to remember me and to make sure they figure out how to schedule me. And the tough part for me is that I feel like I can't plan ahead. I just want us to organize, you know, where we'll be work-wise and making sure I have everything ready that I need to get ready so that when I'm recovering I don't need to worry about those things. You know, just stuff like that. And, but there's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. All I can do is call and remind them each day to remember to think about me and work on scheduling my surgery. But I'm also trying to just not get upset. It doesn't help me to get upset and stressed out. And so when I get stressed, find exercise is the best medicine. Now I'm making a cable from our batteries to our master on off. Our master on-off is a gray 600 amp rated on-off switch. So basically we'll be able to go up to that switch and shut off all the power in the entire house system with one switch and isolate any of our other components so we'll always be able to have no battery load going anywhere if I need to do any work. Now for all of these leads that we got, they have a hole here which fits on everything except for that switch. My dad had to take it into the garage and wallow it out a little bit with a slightly bigger drill bit. So I need to make sure and use the one that he wallowed out for our battery main out to that switch. Unfortunately, since it stormed last night, there's mosquitoes everywhere. I think I've gotten bitten about seven times already just since I've been out here. Getting uh, a little bit emotional about this. I think this has been one of the biggest learning curves for me. I have no electric background. I haven't worked with electricity except for, you know, to splice some wires together in the past. But understanding actual voltage, amperage, wattage, how it all works together, and understanding every component of our system, seeing it in place now, it's really exciting. We're gonna be able to live off of the sun, there's a good chance we may not have a regular power bill ever again. Now we'll include links below in the description for our batteries and all the components that we're using in our system. We are affiliates with Battleborn Batteries, so it's an easy way for you to support our channel by using these links if you're going to be making any purchases for your electrical system. We have two 12 3000 120 inverter chargers and Battleborn recommended these for our system so that we'd be able to power not one but two air conditioning units in the bus. The only obstacle with mounting the MultiPlus inverter chargers is 
they're substantially heavier than any of the electronic equipment we were installing on the wall. So we went ahead and used two by fours to build some structural wall support, both the back of the electrical wall All right, in order to mount the second inverter over here, I need two people because somebody's got to stand on the other side of that wall. I can build a nice little mounting area for the inverter there. Now the way we're setting this up, we're mounting all of our components into an electrical wall. We don't want to use screws long term, they'll shake with the vibration of the bus and eventually give out. So we decided to use bolts and instead of using just a flat washer and a lock nut, I've opted to grab a couple boxes of pronged T-nuts and what that'll do is let us bite into the wood from one side so that the more we tighten it, the more the T-nut digs into the wood. Kind of one of those times where I'm starting to feel like I'm making real progress and it's interrupted by real life going back sitting on the computer and keeping my job going so we'll see you guys tomorrow there was so much preparation that went into this electric system <laughs> that Donnie's dad really thought the install was gonna be fast that all the work had been done the preparation work but they have run into a few different little obstacles that have slowed things down. So what's been happening? Well, the main obstacles have been, there's so many different wire sizes for different components to connect, which means there's different lug sizes. And so we've had to run to the hardware store a couple times to get new wires, make sure we had the right wire so it would be safe but then realized we didn't have lugs for those wires, so I had to run back again today to get those. It's the kind of thing you don't want to do a sort of MacGyver <laughs> to make it work. It's starting to look pretty sexy in there. It's starting to look like it does in the movies <laughs> or in the YouTube videos. In the movies. <laughs> so we're now at the point we can make some holes in the floor and run the power coming from the sun down in to start charging our batteries. Okay, my little past jobs are done for now in the bedroom until they finish putting that electric in. So I'm gonna come to the bathroom. Something that I still haven't done yet is varnish. Everything in the bathroom that's painted white, we're just hitting with some sealant just because of all the moisture that'll be in the bathroom. I was kind of waiting because we still have to build the other bathroom wall and I've got to paint that and varnish that, but uh, I just kind of want to keep busy right now. Seems like something I can do. In order to make this work, I bought the size two, three, five foot, 10 foot, so I have enough that I know I'd be able to get everything wired up today. I'm all over the place today with little odd jobs. I'm gonna get out of the bus now because they're busy wiring the solar panels down to the batteries. I'm gonna get out of their way and I'm gonna come out here and stain some trim. One 
of the uh, positive things about the surgery date being pushed further and further along is that it's given me a lot of time to think and reflect and sort of sit with how I feel about the surgery. I feel like women's health is like mental health. It's something that's still like a little taboo to talk about. I realize certain things about women's health suddenly faced with having to make this decision. It was a pretty easy decision for me to make because Don and I have a plan already to adopt in the future. But there's still like a sense of loss. And it's a strange thing to feel because I've had the ability to have a baby, but I made a choice. Don and I spoke a lot about it and we still made a decision that adoption was what we wanted to do. But now that that choice is being taken away from me, it, it's a strange feeling of loss. And I'm not gonna lie, I actually opened that chapter of the book again and thought, wait, now that I'm gonna lose the ability to do this, should we try to make a baby first before I have a hysterectomy? And it didn't take long, I closed that chapter again and I felt confirmed in my decision. I'd made the right decision to adopt and this wasn't going to alter the plans, but I just had to sit with that feeling of loss, like there is mourning that needs to happen. And I wanted to talk about this because I didn't realize until I was told that I had fibroids and that it was recommended that I get a hysterectomy that this is actually pretty common. By the age of 50, about 70 to 80 percent of women have fibroids. That's a huge percentage. It's perhaps something that we keep quiet, that that number shocks me so much to hear. If there is one woman out there who is going through what I'm going through, if it helps you to hear somebody talk about it, I just feel like we shouldn't have to keep it so quiet and hush-hush. I also thought that I was really young to get a hysterectomy. That was my first question to the OBGYN. But I'm so young. And as it turns out, I'm 42 and the average age of a hysterectomy is actually 42. And I understand that for some women my age or younger who are forced with making the decision of having a hysterectomy, it could be a much harder choice than it was for me to make. I can see that it could be a heartbreaking decision. I feel that sense of loss and I'm just sitting with it and letting myself mourn that loss of my womb, of my uterus. Even, even though I didn't plan to put it to use, it's still a part of you that you're losing that and I know my quality of life will be better at the end of the day but it still is a heartbreaking thing to go through. Now, in the next couple weeks, we'll publish a video sharing a tour of our entire electrical system with details on our batteries and our components. Getting ready to feed the uh, DC down. So this will be our power for our lights, our fans. It's going to come through this conduit tube. Like most jobs we've done, we're building the bus when we're getting towards the end of it I'm gonna be pretty good at crimping wires so we're down to our last cable before we could actually 
turn on and test the DC power from the batteries to run into the house lights and the fans. Not on. What's the problem? When are you gonna be able to give me some power for my batteries? Hopefully in the next 20 minutes. 20 minutes? That's yep. all? For the last year and a half or so on our bus build, we'd either run an extension cable out all the way across the yard and into the garage. In about 20 minutes, we're gonna be running off our battle born batteries for all of our lighting, fans, all of our 12 volt power. Is this time? Yep. All right. This is the final component for our DC power. If anybody needs an unlicensed electrician, call somebody else. <laughs> Measuring continuity in an analog fashion here, okay? So go on here, look. And we should have pretty much a closed circuit, right? It shows zero ohms, right? And what's most important is when we go over here, we should not see anything. It's an open circuit, right? Okay. The plus bar to the minus bar. Yeah, because there's no connection. Right. So what do you got to do now? Now I am going to hook the final battery cable up. So for your DC volt, you'll notice there's a 0 to 30 volt scale, right? right? And when you look at this, there's 10, 10 volts, 11, 12, 13. So okay. it doesn't give you the res resolution that a digital meter does, but at least you can see it's 13 point something, can't you? Yeah. All right, good. Does that mean we're ready for power? You no, know, what do you think? Are you ready? <laughs> you got to give us the final go here. I'm, I'm ready. If you're ready, I'm ready. Well, Don, I think we've done everything imaginable, safety-wise. Here we go. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? 13 got volts? 13 volts. I think I've got everything that we have in the bus turned on right now. If we were to keep our lights and our max fan, which is all the 12 volt DC that we have right now in the bus, according to this, we could keep powering them for two days and 14 hours until the batteries would be depleted. And that's without our solar panels hooked up yet. Thirteen point two nine. How does it know it's connected to the MPPT right now? Uh, because when I turned the MPPT on, it showed it right here. Oh, it shows right there. Yeah. So it's, it's talking about Bluetooth right now. Yeah. Ah. It all, so as soon as it got power, it showed up. Okay. We got the MPPT turned on, and then it's charging the battery. Looking at our battery monitor, it says that with all the lights in the bus, the sun up, and the fans on, it could go to infinity. It just could just keep running forever. So all we have to do is keep driving and follow the sun <laughs> to keep power on at all times. Today Facebook reminded me that two years ago on this day we posted the trailer saying our demolition series was about to start. Two years later we finally have power. You'd see heat there because there'd be arcing and it hard and hot. Are you drawing power still? Yeah, yeah I got everything on. Okay, good, good. We are at a milestone on working on the bus. And we should be jumping up and down right now on chairs egg, but it's so stinking hot that we are struggling <laughs> to show our enthusiasm. But inside here, we are rejoicing, I promise you. <laughs> we now have our Battleborn GC3 batteries hooked up to part of our electrical system. Our 12 volt DC lights and fans are running inside the bus 
all from the power of the batteries and they're being charged by our solar panels on the roof. We want to say a big, big thank you to Battleborn Batteries for partnering with us. We will include links below, so if you are working on your electrical system in your build, consider using our links in the description because they will help support our channel. If you're curious about our components we used for our system, we'll include a link over to the resources page on our website. And you can see all the details for everything we use to put our system together. Mel is dying to get the AC on. <laughs> air conditioning. In order to do that, we now are ready to hook up the AC power alternating current through our inverter chargers and then we'll have house power to power all our household items in the bus. So I'm going to try to get Don working on that AC. <laughs> Don and his dad are busy working on electric. I picked up these DC isolator switches. Been good for me because they've been working on electric and I've had time to get a bunch of things done and I just want to get done before surgery. We can vacuum from our battle-worn batteries. I have never seen Don so excited to vacuum before <laughs> in my life. What happened to your finger Don? I was working doing something and all of a sudden dad said I'll go get a band-aid. And so he went off and he came back. I think he cut himself at the exact same time he did, I did. So he went and got a Band-Aid on his thumb, but um, I just went ahead and used some electrical tape and some uh, rag, because I didn't want to stop working on the system. Because that's the most sanitary way. <laughs> yeah. Another country, yeah. <laughs> if you had duct tape, would you use it? Uh, yeah, okay. but Good. electrical tape was closer. Huge thanks to my dad for all his help and knowledge to help us safely install our electrical system.